Yes, yeah, so being a science teacher of middle school students who will tell you to your face that the lesson's boring, that they don't like you, after several years of teaching, you kind of learn, okay, this is gonna keep their attention. And they love doing hands-on experiments, right? So we're gonna do some hands-on stuff today. And I'm really excited to talk about fermented plant juice. We call it FPJ for short. So if I say that through the talk, what's he talking about? Uh, FPJ is the fermented plant juice. Now, here's a picture of one that I had made. This was in 2020. I saved a little bit just to show you that after a few years, it's still shelf stable and filled with nutrients. So this is a great way to capture, hello, <laughs> good to see you, <laughs> to capture some of your nutrients and store it for a long period of time. So we're going to talk about some more benefits in a moment. All right, Korean natural farming. People all over the world for thousands of years have been using natural nutrients uh, for fertilizer, and they've been using fermentation in Korea. Uh, Master Cho, he developed a process that is just a very, you know, methodological way of doing it um, step by step. But if you look around the world, there are many people who have been fermenting their plants and been doing weed teas and so on. So it's not just in Korea. But I really like this method and I've learned to adapt it using some of Florida plants. So we'll talk about that today as well. It's a super low cost way of making your own fertilizers. Okay, right now we're looking to save money. The cost of everything seems to be going up. And so this is a great time for me to be here and just show you in terms of fertilizer, let's show you how to make your own fertilizer at home, either to just do most of it yourself or to supplement what you're already doing. And we're creating high quality inputs. All right, when you look at your NPK on the, let's say your synthetic fertilizers at the store, the numbers are really high. They're really high because a lot of the nutrients are not going to even be released from the compounds that they're in, and a lot of it get washed away. And so in terms of the amount of nutrients that actually gets released and absorbed by the plant, Korean natural farming, these methods are just superior. Okay, you could have almost half of the fertilizer that you apply to your lawn um, in your garden, wash off the yard when it rains and go into the local waterways, which is going to cause algae blooms and fish kills and will turn your lakes and ponds. Um, it, it will, uh, the eutrophication process with the weeds will make it more shallow and you're not going to enjoy fishing anymore. It's going to be very difficult with all the weeds. So fish kills, toxic algae blooms. We've been seeing a lot of it in Florida and partly due to agriculture, okay, as well as septic and, and lawn fertilizers. So you're going to be using plants from your garden as well as food scraps from your home. With Korean Natural Farming, I'm not going to show these tonight, but you can take your eggshells, um, bones from the pigs and cows. Um, you're going to be, you can be using just food scraps from your kitchen, banana peels and so on. You can ferment all this stuff. Get your potassium from your bananas, your phosphorus from your bones, your calcium from your eggshells. And there's ways to extract it and make it into these shelf-stable forms that you can use for many different uses. Not just for your garden, but also for yourself. You can make your own calcium supplement, your own probiotic supplement. Um, you're making your own um, uh, medicine from like Moringa. You can make extracts and then apply it to your, for cooking and, and for just adding it to a drink. Okay, so we're not just making nutrients and medicine for our plants, we also can be using many of these for ourselves. Okay, so the, the line between medicine and fertilizer and food is very blurry, blurry in my head. It's just this continuous flow of nutrients that goes through me, through my plants, through my, through my chickens that I recently got, and my soil. It's just a continuous flow of nutrients and I'm finding the systems that allow me to capture those nutrients and transform it from unusable forms, like I can't just like eat this right now, okay? But I can make fertilizer with it, run it through my garden crops that I can eat, and then, you know, it goes through me and, and back through. All right, so this lasts for years as well, um, which I love about it. 
And you're not just delivering nutrients to your plants, but you're also creating living fertilizers that will also build the soil and add uh, microbes um, to, to your soil, OK? This was my yard. Um, when I first moved in, this is what it looked like. And it was pretty bad. Even the grass was pretty much dead. And um, over just the um, course of a few years, I turned it into an edible medicinal <laughs> oasis. Right? And I can talk about, like, you know, we can talk about many different things. I'm capturing energy from the sun. It's getting captured by the, the plants and turned into food and medicine and wood and so on. Um, capturing water, right? Plants are basically water storage tanks. They're like about 70, 80% water. So I'm capturing water, reducing the, uh, the temperature in the yard. I had a few natural ponds. You can't see them all. Um, there's one back there and one over there. But, um, and uh, it's just amazing everything that I was able to grow there. And I wanted to do it as natural as possible. I didn't use any synthetic fertilizers or anything. There's a lot of mulch going on there. There's maybe a little bit of humanure and urine and various things too, but I'm trying to figure out how can my outputs become inputs to, to the garden, all right? And just figuring out a way where I could do it as natural as possible. It's not easy. It takes some time to try to figure it out, but the results are, can be very rewarding, as you can see here. You know, just beautiful colors, biodiversity, I just love it, you know, just see how those colors pop out. And I'm not just feeding myself, but I'm feeding the wildlife there. OK, think about the butterflies and uh, uh, the bees and so on. One of the big realizations I came up, I, I realized uh, over the past few years is that uh, microbes are what make nutrients available naturally to plants. OK, you want to have a living soil. And you want to try to you know, encourage that growth and the vitality in the soil as much as you can. So the microbes are going to be breaking down your plant matter, and then they're going to be turning it into plant-ready nutrients. Also, uh, the plants are going to be releasing these sugars into the soil. They're called exudates. This is basically carbon-rich sugars. They give it to the microbes, and the microbes take that energy, and now they're like supercharged. And they're going to go around in the soil, and they're going to mine iron and calcium and magnesium and all of these micronutrients that aren't in your NPK fertilizers. And they're going to give it back to the plant. Okay? And um, there's also fungi, too, that's in there. And that mycelial network, mycelial network is going to be delivering nutrients and water um, to the plants. You can even see fungi injecting themselves into the roots of the plants and just giving it nutrients. Okay? So these microbes, you might say, oh, they're being altruistic. They're helping out the plant. They're really selfish, like a lot of us are. But they digest externally, so they just shoot these acids out. And then they break down the matter, and they break down the rocks and so on, the, the minerals that are locked in the rocks. And then they just are in this like soup that's just around the roots. We call that the rhizosphere, the area around the roots. And so then they suck up the nutrients that they just unlocked using the acids and enzymes. And they eat it for themselves. But then there's all this extra that's just hanging out around the roots, and the plant sucks it up. OK, so it's just out of the surplus from the microbes, the plants get all these nutrients. Just like all of us, when we find our flow, we have a surplus. Like I was just talking to this woman. I, I, don't, I didn't catch your name, but oh, yeah. Irina, you're talking about all these eggs. You have just a surplus of eggs that you're just giving away, right? And then something else is going to come back to you. Those people are going to help you out with something. Well, that's what's happening in the ecosystem. It's just a continuous process. There's no money in the ecosystem. There's no separate jobs. It's just um, this uh, economy where plants and animals and microbes, they're sharing their surplus. And you know everything is, is working out. All right, so what's the difference between fermented plant juice and kimchi or any type of sauerkraut? Did any of you guys, or kraut, did any of you do lacto fermentation or are you using any type of brine or salt to do? OK, a few of you are. This is very similar. So if you've done any type of fermentation using uh, sea salt, a type of brine, then this is going to be really easy for you. Instead of salt, 
This is really key here. <laughs> Don't use salt. You're going to be using sugar for this. But it has the same effect. The, the crystals in the sugar, when you mix it with your plant matter through osmotic pressure, it's going to be pulling out the liquid as well as the nutrients. And it's going to capture it into the liquid. And then you just strain it out. And then you get you know, something like this. Okay, And then this will be shelf stable. The plant matter, you're just going to compost it. Just put it up back out in your garden. All right, so you got a lot of microbes going on in there, and they're just going to continuously keep breaking things down. And just as you know with your ferments, it's unlocking nutrients from the plant better than if you just did it yourself. We are externalizing the digestion process and doing it in a jar. And then we're putting it inside of ourselves. As you get older, your enzymes in your body start to go down. Your ability to digest food in your stomach goes down. The acids might actually decrease in your, in your stomach. And you can't break down proteins. And you can't release minerals as much from the food. So if you do the external digestion with help of a jar <laughs> and some microbes that are captured from the air, okay, I'm not buying microbes anywhere. They're all around you right now. If you wave your hands around, you can feel the air particles, but there's millions of microbes in there. Okay, bacteria and viruses. Um, there are hundreds. I, I, it's amazing how many um, species are, are around you right now. So they get captured, and then the food attracts them. So they just keep coming in and coming in. And I don't know if they're telling this guy that's out in the air, come in here. I don't know what type of communication they have going on. So here's some Florida plants that I really like to use. Uh, bamboo is the first one, bamboo shoots. Um, the leaves are very dry, so I have some trouble with that, but they're good for like fermenting if you did it in water. Um, but the bamboo shoots, about five days is good, and I'm going to be chopping that up. And um, if they're fresh shoots uh, and they're, it's still soft on the outside, you can just chop that up. But if it's a little brown and a little harder, you just peel those outer ones off. And comfrey is great, it's super loaded with nitrogen and a lot of uh, uh, trace minerals. Mexican sunflower is what I'm going to be doing today. We call it Tithonia diversifolia. Um, sweet potato, particularly the tips, I really like that. Aloe is amazing, and again, you know, you can use this for yourself. Um, you can use the bamboo shoots for yourself as well. Um, sweet potato tips, aloe, moringa is amazing. And um, seaweed, if you squeeze out you know, some of the water or maybe even leave it out for a little bit during the day, um, that way it's not like super watery, um, you can do that too. Because how many people use kelp and you know, seaweed extracts in their garden? Probably like most of us. So you go out to the ocean, you get some seaweed, and you can ferment this as well. All right, so what you want to do to collect these is you want to go early in the morning when you still have the dew, that's when the plants are going to be just loaded with the, the water and the nutrients. Okay, that's the best time of day. You don't want to go out and do this when they're wilted. Okay, I had to go out a little bit later in the day today just because of the, the timing of the talk. But normally, I would get these early in the morning and do this um, early in the day. All right? And you're not just capturing nutrients and microbes. But another thing that you're able to capture uh, and have that synthetic fertilizers have, and even a lot of the organic fertilizers don't have, is hormones. Okay, So you're going to be getting different growth hormones, especially like Moringa is off the charts. Okay, You can make this amazing biostimulant when you ferment the Moringa. And if you get the tips, the new growth tips, that's where a large amount of those hormones are, because they need to be and the tips to help it grow. Okay, a lot of the nutrients and, and the growth hormones are sent to the shoots, to the tips of these plants, to help them grow fast. And so you want that, okay? And that'll even help you grow. I don't know if it's, you know, if you're like a bodybuilder or whatever. I mean, maybe these things will help you with that too. All right? And then you could also do fruits as well, papaya, um, banana. A banana flower is loaded with medicinal bitters. Have you ever tried banana flowers in, this, in the, yeah, it's really bitter? You can uh, chop that up and make a, um, they call it FPJ with that, and that's really good. And so 
Um, if you have plants that are going to be about to flower and about to produce fruit, it's good to make an FPJ with a, a flower or fruit, okay? Because it has those type of nutrients that are going to help it. It doesn't have to be the same plant. Like you, you could use banana flower to help a peach tree blossom better, okay? So we're going to show you how to do this now. Um, it's very simple. You're just going to, again, you get up early in the morning, you go out there. And I was going to harvest these anyways. They were kind of sticking out, you know. This was just going to go either in the compost pile or wherever. And this is just the, the waste or the output of my garden. So I'm just going to put it in the bowl here. I like going to these Asian supermarkets, and they have these big baskets, you know. This is low cost, and I just go out there and I harvest. Yeah. So this is the um, Mexican sunflower. And so I'm going to take this one. They use this for animal fodder, too, for, I think, like cows and pigs and so on. It's got a lot of uh, protein in it, and it's also got a lot of um, nitrogen and phosphorus. So this is going to really help things grow. If you have a lot of nitrogen, then um, that's going to help get the leaves and branches going. Um, if you have a lot of phosphorus, like there's a good amount of phosphorus in here, that can help with um, your flowers and your fruits and vegetables. OK. So I really like that. And you can do sprouts, too. Sprouts are interesting. But I, I, I'm not doing that one tonight, but you can take, you can just get like sprouts, like mung beans have lots of phosphorus in it, and those will help with blossoms and fruiting. You can sprout your mung beans, and then you just take it and um, throw it in a blender with water. You don't have to use any sugar, and then you just make this super enzyme-rich, hormone-rich, phosphorus-rich solution. One woman, she said her orchids didn't blossom for years, and she used that. It was like mung bean and alfalfa sprout, and it's called sprouted seed tea, and it blossomed for the first time in years after she applied that. It was amazing. So, all right. So we're just gonna do this. Um, well, I think I'm good. This is good. You'd be surprised at how much you can fit in a jar. <laughs> I think those who've done kraut before, right, with uh, sauerkraut, kimchi, it's amazing. So we just pour it in here. I used to measure it out, and sometimes it'd say you measure the weight like one to one. It doesn't work for all plants. So I learned just to feel it. And what I'm going to do I'm going to walk around in a moment just to kind of really show you what I'm doing. I think the camera can get that. But just like you would with any ferment, and I'm not going to go too far away, but you just want to massage it in. Okay, You want to break the cell walls of the plant, and that's going to start to pull out the water and the nutrients. Okay, So you guys can see that. This is brown sugar. Now, I've had, I get a lot of questions. Can I use regular sugar? Um, can I use, I don't know, honey or molasses? The brown sugar seems to work a little bit better, and I believe it has a little more minerals in it, too. So you just keep mixing it around. This is the way they traditionally do it. And I don't know if anyone's tried any other methods, but the brown sugar has been it's been good to me. This is not organic, but if you're going to be doing it for yourself, if you're going to be making, you know, um, one that's for the plants and for you, then try doing the, the organic. I would recommend that. You know, I hear stories about some of it, but this is what I had, and I just had it for a little while. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a workout for you, you know. The Moringa's not as bad, but this one's a little more challenging. But once you get it going, you're going to notice that it's getting darker, 
and it's getting softer. Okay. Now, like I said, the ones I really like for myself is going to be the Moringa, the bamboo shoot. Um, I like doing the sweet potato tips. All right, just think about that. Like, you know, that plant is putting all that energy and nutrients into those tips, and now you're capturing it and preserving it, and you're getting those enzymes, hormones, nutrients, and you're also getting a probiotic in your, in your body, right? 80% of your immune system function is regulated by the microbes in your gut, in your large intestine. Um, they're finding microbes in every organ of the body, even the brain, and um, they think that it helps for growth and regulation of various compounds. The microbes, when they eat some of the compounds in the food that you eat, like the curcumin and your turmeric and so on, most of those compounds are probably like 90% indigestible by your body. So you're like, how am I getting the benefits of curcumin? How am I getting the benefits of lycopene in my tomatoes? How am I getting the benefits of anthocyanins in my blueberries? The microbes, they break it down. They're the ones who are digesting and breaking it down, and they turn it into little compounds that circulate throughout your, your body. They found in a mouse, 70% of the chemicals that are circulating through the bloodstream are microbially produced. Okay, they're made by what the microbes are eating. They circulate through the body. They suppress tumor growth. They create serotonin, uh, melatonin. I think it's melatonin and dopamine uh, for your brain. Um, they do all sorts of things. But they also make medicine for the plants, and they release it into the soil. There's a lot of um, uh, medicine that they get for, for people, like nice, I think Nystatin, um, of course, we all know about penicillin. That comes from mold. There's a lot of antibacterial, antifungal compounds that are made by microbes, and the pharmaceutical company changed the structure slightly. Okay? Avermectin, with an A, made by microbes, changed the structure a little bit. Ivermectin, right? The microbes, they are nature's original pharmacy. Okay? So you want that in your body. Look at this. Look at it now. All right, so we're going to take this and um, we're going to just stuff it in the jar. Does it have to be in a glass bottle? Um, you, you could probably do like a, like a ceramic jar, things like that. I wouldn't do it in the plastic. I would do it in there. And then you want to just put this in a cool, dark place afterwards. That's ideal. And just really pack it down. Okay, it's amazing how much I put in here, and I'm not even going to get up to the top. But you don't want to get to the top. What you want to do is go have about a third of the space. That's going to hold the microbes. It's going to just leave a little breathing room for this whole process to take place. Exactly why you need to leave some space at the top, I don't really know all of it, all the reasons. Sometimes nature just, you know, going to hold on to some of those secrets. But we are going to keep some of the air. There's microbes in the air, and so that's going to go. Eventually, they're going to realize that the food is down below, and we just have it like that. Some people who do Korean natural farming, like Chris Trump, who's a popular guy, he puts a little sugar cap on top like that. And you know, it might help prevent maybe some mold from growing. And sometimes it gets a little crusty and just kind of holds it down. But you don't have to do that. I'm just showing you if you want to do a little sugar cap, you just push it like that. OK. Now, if you want, you can clean this up. And you can just take like a cloth or a paper towel and just kind of wipe everything. Just clean it up just a little bit. Try to get all the plant matter that might be around. Just take that off. I'll do that here. And then. After you do that, if you have, depending on the size of your jar, because some of you, if you have large gardens, um, you're going to maybe even use a larger jar, kind of like, like these here, you know? 
Yeah, this is big time. When you get really into this, you're going to go and use the big jars. But for me, I just have this small jar. For the big jars, you can use like a bandana or an old t-shirt or whatever. I'm just going to put some cheesecloth on here. Um, I'm trying to stay away from paper towels as much as I can, but paper towels do look really nice. I think I have one there. And then just a rubber band. All right. So now the microbes are still going to be able to get through here. Okay, they're going to still be able to travel through. They're very small, and they're traveling through the air, and they're looking for food. And so they're going to go in here, and they're going to start breaking things down. You also have a lot of microbes on the leaves already. Okay, and that's what they call the phyllospheres, like the, the on the plant, the on the leaves. So over time, you're going to get, and I think you can even see it there. It's a little watery on the bottom, more watery in the bottom. And um, it's going to take about five to seven days. OK, five to seven days. And they found that after that, the, the nutrient content is not much different. It's not going to increase much more after that. Um, so five to seven is fine. You, you're going to see some bubbles in here as well. OK? And, and then after that, what you're going to do is you can take, this is a paint strainer that I got from like Home Depot for just a few dollars. I got like a two pack. And what you do is you're just going to take this when you're done and you're going to pour it in here and just, you know, squeeze it out, strain it out. And I like to strain it out over a, I put like a little strainer. They have these wide mouth funnels. There's some that are like stainless steel and plastic. It just makes the surface area a lot larger so you don't spill things all over the place. And um, I'll just stick it over that and, and have like a little like metal strainer on top of that and just kind of go through. But it doesn't have to be too fancy. I mean, you could just take this and strain it into a jar. All right. And then after that, this is what you're going to have. Okay, this is the tithonia. I call it tithonia. It's the Mexican sunflower, you know, FPJ. All right. So the plant matter gets composted. You don't need that anymore. And now you have this, and it's shelf stable. And it's good to have the cap on loose, OK? Because this is alive, and the microbes are going to be making some gas, <laughs> OK? <Yeah. laughs> and you don't want the jar to explode or anything like that. So you're going to um, just have it like that, and then put it in a cool, dark place, and then um, I think we have a few more slides where I can show you what to do after that. Okay, because some of you are going to want to use this right away. This was me doing the Moringa FPJ. And I think if I press this, you guys, let me see. I'm going to, I think I might, I know my. Sorry, Chris, but I might have to get a little bit of sugar on your. No. Let's see. I press play. But of course, you know, on this um, particular computer, it might be. Um, being a Mac, maybe there might be some different. It's because you made it on a PC, but we won't judge you. Yeah, well, I want it to come alive for you guys. But later, you know, after this presentation stuff, I, could, I might be able to possibly extract it from there. Um, yeah. What do you think? Are you able to work some magic? It says cannot play media, I see now. So it must be a weird. It's probably an issue with the, uh, with the Mac. All right? It worked fine before. But I want to show you here. These are microbes, OK, these little guys here. There's lots of activity that was going on in there. So now when you're applying this to the soil, you're adding all these extra microbes. And by having all these extra microbes in the soil, 
you have more that can um, break down even the plant matter that's around the plant and breaking down things and delivering more nutrients to the plant. Okay, so it's not just the nutrients that are in, in your, your, your fertilizer, but now you got more microbial activity that can break down a lot of stuff in the soil and give more to the plant, okay? Some of you might ask me and say, like, well, how can you prove that this stuff even works, okay? Like, you can see the microbes, okay, all this, and this looks fancy and everything. But there are several journal articles that um, have tested these out. And this one here from the Bangladesh Journal of Botany, it shows, as you can see, the control is actually the one on the, the bottom, the light blue one. All right, that showed the, the least growth. So this graph is showing you plant height versus the weeks after they transplant it to the soil. All right, so we have the, um, the control, T1 is the very bottom line. And then the red one is water spinach, which I believe is also called King Kong, and you can grow it here, uh, water spinach, and banana FFJ, which is a fermented fruit juice, which you're basically taking the banana and you're fermenting it with sugar, okay? Um, that together, and they're done separately in separate jars, but then when you apply it, you just put them together in like your liquid application, which I'll show you in a minute. That one was superior, and um, the pineapple and the bamboo shoot, that one jumped up pretty high right here, which is more of the vegetative stage when it needed a lot of nitrogen, because the bamboo shoot was giving it like a good amount of nitrogen. And um, so that was doing well in terms of the vegetation. So this was used for tomato plants, okay? So they used these, and as you can see, they weren't using tomato FPJs. They were using ones from other plants and applying it, and they got um, pretty, signif you know, pretty significant, between 60 centimeters to 100. Or no, what is it about? The control was maybe about 80. So about 20 centimeters different difference maybe in the growth from the control um, versus the, um, the ones with the uh, fermented plant juice. So that's, that's you know, pretty good results there. And a lot of those results you're going to see are going to be from journals from other countries or just people like you and me who do the experiments ourselves because there's no money in this for, for these big universities and the, um, the chemical companies, the fertilizer companies. They would lose money showing you this stuff, okay? So they're not going to be the ones who are going to give you this data. And I just like looking at all of the information that I'm getting from all of you and looking at the results and going on YouTube and going on Instagram and seeing the results that people are getting. Because our data that we're able to get is just as good. You're showing the results before and after. I believe that, OK? There's a lot of uh, misinformation now in published journals. It's crazy, but the person who was in charge of the, um, was it JAMA? Was that a journal of, um, it's just eluding me right now, but the most prestigious uh, medical journal here in the United States. She left. She quit because she said, um, that a lot of these articles, they were either like forged or the data was messed up, and she left and she wrote a book about it, okay? Um, and there's some recent information coming out about that. So there are ways where they, they create these journal reports, and then you look at it, and then it supports their medicine, and then you get the medicine. So, um, you know, it's hard to know who to believe. But for me, seeing is believing. So if I'm doing this and it's working, it's like, OK, it's working. This is the banana flower FPJ. Check this out. Like I said, it's loaded with beneficial bitters. A lot of bitters make you better, is what I say. Um, this one's good. And it helps with the fruiting, the flowering for your plants. We can be talking about flowers. We can be talking about fruits, vegetables. This one's good. All right, beautiful flower. A lot of people just chop it off and compost it or throw it away, but you can um, Use it as a nutrient for yourself in the garden. I like to use a 1 to 500 ratio. It's crazy, but one part FPJ to 500 parts water, which would be 2 milliliters per liter minimum and 8 milliliters per gallon. OK, minimum. So depending if you're doing gallons or liters, however you like to measure, um, you're not using a lot. 
a little goes a very long way. All right, and that's for most of these solutions that you make with Korean natural farming. And that's because the nutrients are released so readily by using the microbes, okay? Um, with commercial fertilizers, as well as your supplements that you get, if you look on the back, you might see, oh, I'm getting 5,000% of B12, or I'm getting, like, you know, 1,000 milligrams of magnesium oxide. You know magnesium oxide is only, like, 10% absorbable. 90% of it's, yeah. it's so hard to get that magnesium off the oxygen. It's really hard. So they try to combine magnesium with things called like glycinate or there's magnesium citrate. Those are like large organic compounds and they're easy to come off. So they're easy to absorb. But this is even better, okay? These are natural, so you can get the magnesium off of these organic compounds very easily. You can get the nitrogen off very easily because your magnesium, zinc, and, uh, you know, calcium and so on, they don't exist by themselves in nature. They need a friend. You need someone to bind with. They're always, they're stable when they're with somebody, right? Like a lot of us, right? When we're by ourselves, we're like, ah, doing crazy stuff. Um, so uh, with the microbes, they easily break these things apart, and they get those uh, minerals into your plants very easily. All right, so I hope that's a good analogy. <laughs> All right, um, these are a few other things that I've made. The fish amino acid, I love this because a lot of you want you know, nitrogen for your garden. And um, instead of just throwing a dead fish at the bottom of your tomato plants, you, know, you, can, um, you can take uh, fish parts. We can, we can talk about the bones, the heads, the tails. Find a fisherman, someone who's doing this, and you just put a little sugar on the bottom, put your fish guts on there, another inch of uh, sugar, another fish guts and heads and, and, and bones, and just keep going. Put it in either a big like uh, five gallon bucket, cap it, and forget about it for like six months. And then you open it up, and it smells amazing, and you can use it as fish sauce. I have, I've eaten it. And this is fish amino acid here from a few years ago, and I'm not gonna drink it right now, but that's how they do it. That's how they make fish sauce, pretty much. So it works, and uh, so then you take that and you give it to your plants, and it's a great nitrogen um, fertilizer, right? And there it is, right? Seeing is believing, there it is. Yes, I did eat some of that. <laughs> but that's what you gotta do when you wanna talk about it. He's like, okay, I don't believe you're not gonna get sick. I'm like, okay. Anyway. Um, well, before I talk about the resources, I just want you to know, if you're doing it more on a larger scale in your garden, what you can do is, let's say you get a garbage can, it's like 30 gallons, all right? Put it on top of your, I do my metal gorilla cart. Okay, I just put it on there, fill it up with water. I do my, um, my calculations. You know, there is an app that you can get, KNF app, on iPhones, like $4. It will do all the math for you. Like, I need a 30-gallon solution, and I'm going to use the FPJ, and they'll say, okay, you need this amount. It's very simple. But I think there's also an online calculator, maybe even on that website, naturalfarminghawaii.net, uh, and you can do that. Some of you love doing calculators and math yourself, and that's perfectly fine. All right? So then you add your, your um, Korean natural farming solutions, and it's also going to show you some of the mixes you can do. Like say my plant is in a vegetative state right now, it needs to make lots of branches and leaves. Okay, here's a few solutions that you can add and this is the amount and you can mix them together afterwards. You make them separately first and then later you can mix a few of them together, okay? And then you add that to the plants and you can do, um, you can do a foliar spray which you, you spray under the leaves. There's like millions of mouths under those leaves. They look like mouths, you look at them under a microscope, and they can suck up the nutrients underneath in the morning. They like to, to feed, and you can go under the leaf. That's foliar. Or you could do the fertigation, which is the soil drench, and you can just water around the you know, area of the plant. All right, so what I do is I can take this, and I got this pump here, and it just, um, this is a submersible utility pump. And I just put this in the water. 
And it's usually pretty clean. I don't usually have any material in there other than the water and, and the juice. So, but anyways, sometimes for, for some of the things I do, I usually put like a little filter here. So when it sucks it up, it doesn't get any like plant matter. But usually my solutions are pretty clean. So that's your choice. And then um, I plug it in and I just go around the garden and I just water everything, okay, with my cart. I just go around once a week, okay? Once a week. Yeah, once a week. You don't have to do more than that, all right? And if you're more of a small scale person, you have a small uh, garden, you can just do, you know, one of these pumps, just put it in, pump it up, and just spray, spray around, right? The pest control companies are really good at giving you things for applying uh, life and nutrients, okay? You can take their stuff and use it for good, and that's what I like to do. But this is actually, I think Solo is just a regular company that sometimes they use the other stuff. Um, YouTube, you can go Korean Natural Farming, there's a lot of good videos there as well. But um, naturalfarmingkawaii.net, they have some great instructions for you. And they even have a, uh, like a Q&A support um, site. All right, so this is what I was talking about before with the app that you can get. And a lot of these, um, these letters might seem a little confusing right now, but we know the FPJ. All right, and the FPJ works really well, and that's one of the easiest ones to do. And I love it. Don't worry about having to do all of those. Like the water-soluble calcium and phosphorus, that's from the bones in vinegar. That's the um, uh, calcium is the eggshells in vinegar. Lab is basically a probiotic that you can make for yourself. Use, you make a little rice wash. You take the rice wash from the rice that you would normally throw out, sit it out for a few days, it collects the microbes, add it to some milk. It'll make your curds and whey. You keep the whey. That's your lactobacillus bacteria. It's a great probiotic, and you can spray it on the leaves and so on, and it helps help the immune system of the plant. Um, and then you can take some drops yourself, okay? And that's a natural probiotic. And it works really good, and I've looked at it under the microscope, and there's a lot of microbes in there, and they're lactobacillus. They look like, you know, the real deal, okay? Um, awesome. And if you want to go to naturehacker.com, you can sign up for my newsletter, and I will give you some information here, and I will post some information um, within the next few days on how to make this, and so to save paper and so on, it will be on the website, just simple instructions how to make this solution um, for, for your garden, okay? Um, I also do a lot right now, I'm doing a lot with rainwater systems because a lot of people are, are um, concerned about water and you know, collecting water. So I have a rainwater system I built, I put it on YouTube, and I got over like 300,000 views, and um, I'm now in a rainwater book. I think it's the biggest selling rainwater book on Amazon. I'm in, I'm in there, I'm featured in there, my system's featured in there, and um, I show people how to build that system, as well as how to build a pump that hooks up to your rainwater system that you can attach to a rainwater shower, a sink, um, your hose, um, drip irrigation, okay? It's an on-demand pump that's, that's solar powered, and so it's off-grid. You can attach it to any system, rainwater system that you have um, at your house. And so if you're interested in that, I do have a few e-guides that are like, like 10 bucks that show you how to build everything step-by-step, step, all the parts. I've had a few women on there that, uh, that were like, I, I never knew how to do anything with this stuff, and I built it myself. I'm like, okay, great. I had a museum in... Um, I think it was in uh, Tennessee that built one of my systems, which was really cool. So it's a lot of fun, and I'm glad I'm able to help people with being more resilient, okay? Whether it's nutrient delivery systems, water delivery systems, or whatever. All right, so thank you so much.